Item 6 is members' questions. Can I ask that members who wish to ask supplementary questions stand up and state supplementary and also say that any supplementary questions are put forward clearly and briefly. Councillor Osborne. Question number one to the leader, please. Madam Mayor, I thank Councillor Osborne for his question, which is um, set out in the printed version we all have. What I'd just simply add is that um, having saddled the country with a debt which takes about 120 million per day to service, it is a little rich now to ask whether we can have a pain-free cure. Um, I guess that's not actually possible. And I suspect Councillor Osborne's supplementary will be, why can't you find such a pain-free cure? Why can't we borrow our way out of the crisis? Supplementary, Madam Mayor. Actually, that's not my question. My question is this. I'm astonished. Is the leader telling us that he's made no effort whatsoever to give a lead to this borough on this subject, to plan ahead for this borough, to try and anticipate for this borough the damage being done by this measure, the damage that will be done by this me measure, because it comes about as a direct result of his government's austerity programme. An austerity programme without growth, which has led directly to a second, led to a second wave of recession two years into his party's period of government. The clue in all this Question, please, is here. He may not be a clairvoyant, but he is leader of the borough. I thank Councillor Osborne for his supplementary, which is a kind of rewording of what I said his supplementary might be. It doesn't take the responsibility for 13 years of mismanagement of this economy, doesn't take responsibility of the debts that this country has been saddled with, doesn't take responsibility for what has been unfolded on this country, and then simply says, borrow your way out of it. Second supplementary. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Sorry. Sorry, Nick. Thank you. Second supplementary, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, is the leader getting a little bit fed up of the Labour Party's view that we spent our way into this trouble and now we're going to spend our way out of it? Uh, does he agree with me that there is an illogicality about that? And the real tragedy is not that in the longer term it's economic nonsense. The real tragedy is that we are spending vast amounts of our children's money that they're going to have to pay back. And the level of morality that's involved in that I think is outrageous, whether it's in Greece, whether it's in France, but thank heaven, something that we're not seeing at the moment in this country. Well, the short answer to Councillor Grimston's supplementary would be yes, yes, and yes, really. Um, I think um, Councillor Grimston will not be surprised and neither are any of the colleagues in this chamber surprised at the short-sighted way in which the Labour Party is approaching the whole issue. Just because the children are too young to shout that they don't want to be saddled, let's saddle them and then think about what the consequences might be later. Councillor Osborne. Question number two to the leader, please. I thank Councillor Osborne for his um, question, which has a very pithy and pertinent answer. Supplementary, Madam Mayor? Possibly, yeah. Um, so is the leader saying that because he has limited statistics for the borough, he's made no effort to anticipate the coming impact of this measure or even try to understand the impact of this measure? Uh, incidentally, just as his Chancellor, I suspect, failed to understand it when he slipped it into the budget, uh, because let me tell him this, if I were leader of the borough, this would be on my agenda already. Well, well, you're not, and it's not on your agenda. <laughs> Second supplementary, Mr. Madam Mayor. Councillor McCausland. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, does the leader believe that pensioners in Wandsworth will benefit from this year's greatest ever cash increase in the state pension since it was introduced? and introduced by this government. Councillor McCausland is absolutely right. But you know, the one thing that pensioners do value, that we can shape, and we have shaped consistently over 30 years, is giving value for money, keeping council tax, the, the one burden 
that they cannot dodge at the minimum level and at the affordable level for all whilst maintaining the quality of services. That's a message that we get from Wandsworth, one that I know will be followed in the GLA and, and I'm sure the government actually wants to emulate it for the nation. Councillor Maxwell Scott. Uh, question number three is the leader. Uh, I thank Councillor Maxwell Scott for his question uh, earlier. Um, he was uh, asking me whether my answer was yes. And I said, well, if it was no, that would be an interesting one, wouldn't it? Um, so the answer is absolutely yes. Um, it depends which David you're talking about. There are lots of Davids on there. Uh, but I have to, to, to add to the printed question to say, well, I have written to uh, Boris Johnson to congratulate him and his team um, offered to in fact help with the ones with way of doing things so that his strategy of driving down costs and giving value for money, of which we have an excellent record, that he could learn a lesson or two from us. Supplementary minimum. Yes. I'd like to thank the leader for his answer and, and share with him his enthusiasm uh, about the uh, result, which is marvellous. Um, I wonder, whilst we talk about numbers, if he, uh, the leader might be able to help the Labour group with one. Um, they went into the GLA election 19 points ahead in the polls in London, and yet managed to lose the constituency vote by 14%, 34% to 48%. By my maths, that means they've misplaced 33% of the vote. Does the leader have any idea where they might find it? Well... Well, the biggest, biggest strategic mistake the Labour Party did is in the selection of their candidate. Many of us have wondered whether, in fact, had a different candidate run, whether the outcome would have been different. And political pundits have often wondered whether it might have been. But they shot themselves in the foot. I also know many Labour uh, members who would have said that this result is disappointing, but not half as disappointing if it had been the other way. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think um, would, would the leader um, be aware of the, of the figure? I think it's a four percent swing to Boris since the last election, um, which is pretty outstanding amongst uh, not only London but, but the entire country. Would would that be right? I think what Councillor McCausland alludes to is the charisma that Boris brought to his office and, the, and how far he transcended all sorts of divides across London to galvanise public opinion behind him. He would not, in most circumstances, one would say that in the difficult financial crisis we have, had as easy a run as he had. But to have been returned so overwhelmingly across London is a testament to his personality and his record. Councillor Cooper. Councillor Cooper. Question number four to the leader. I, uh, Madam Mayor, I thank um, Councillor Cooper for her question. And may I offer her my congratulations on uh, being uh, elected uh, Deputy Leader of the Labour Group. Um, I guess it's uh, a form of a consolation prize, but uh, nonetheless richly deserved. I know that my deputy is looking forward to you shadowing him. Uh, perhaps not too closely, I guess. Um, uh, Madam Mayor, the answer to this question should be read together with the answer to question 40, 40 which Councillor um, um, Clare has asked. This contract has been a challenge, but in fact, like all contracts, they start being challenging and do settle down. Already the figures of relief in the, in the printed answer shows that the direction of travel is positive things are settling and working through. The contract has had some problems and there's no point in denying those, but those are mainly behind us. As for the issue of publicity, you know, we have done our best to make sure that a posted communication from this council to every household had in its centrefold the details of the changes in, in the refuse collection regime. One would have thought that the most important communication from this council to every household would have been taken as seriously as it should have been. Well, nonetheless, I have to say that after the first two or three weeks, most of the people have taken on the change regime and, and things are, are working fine. Oh. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, thank you uh, to the leader for his um, 
Uh, congratulations on my uh, consolation prize, as he described it. Um, can I just uh, ask him to clarify for me that he really does regard as a success that a number of residents were initially unaware of any change, that he also regards it as a success that we've had um, teething problems and that as yet not all of the services are being delivered normally. Um, he may be surprised to know that I had cause to ring Mr McDonald again on Monday to say that um, a vast quantity of the first down ward had once again not been collected and yet the street cleaners were trying to clean the streets um, around the mountains of uh, rubbish that had still been left out on the highway. So there seems to be a little bit of a lack of coordination still going on there and I wonder if he could tell us when he thinks all of these problems are likely to come to an end. Uh, I thank Councillor Cooper for her supplementary. And the answer to question 40 sets out how change of contracts and, and on previous occasions have worked out. Each time the change has resulted in some sort of disconcertation amongst residents as to what is going to happen to the refuse. This change is no different, except that this is the most significant change we have had for many years, a long time. Both recycling and refuse is being collected at the same time in the same vehicle, which is, means that the, the, the collection routes are longer and therefore the people who are used to a very early collection are, are, are confused because collection doesn't take place uh, uh, at the usual time. But nonetheless, waste does get collected. Equally, the six-day collection in Putney and Roehampton is no more and it's, it's much to their uh, well, welcome. It is a five-day collection without their Saturday mornings disrupted. The collection also includes collecting garden waste. These are significant changes being made at the same time as delivering savings. Inevitably there are problems and I don't deny those and, and the officers have worked like Trojans to address them. I don't, I cannot and I will not be able to say that three days from today that problems would end. What I can give a commitment to is that my colleagues and the council officers team are absolutely committed to making sure that this contract has the least further time to settle to the satisfaction levels. Second supplementary. Mr. Um, Clay. Is the leader as disappointed as I am that the deputy leader of the opposition who actually voted in favour of this new contract can't find a single thing that's positive to say about it? Does he join me in welcoming a new refuse contract that reduces the number of vehicles on the road, ends early Saturday morning collections, and introduces free garden waste collections? Well, I share Councillor Clay's surprise at the tone Councillor Cooper's across has taken. It is obvious, I mean, the, in the past she's voted for something and then found every reason to distance herself from the decision she has made. So that doesn't come to me as a surprise. In fact, at the time of award of the contract, the kind of the goodies that you mentioned were exactly the kind of goodies that we felt that were, were deliverable uh, by, by the new contract regime. Let's also not minimize the reduction in the number of vehicle movements in, in waste collection. I mean, the significant amount of uh, uh, significant reduction in carbon emissions, which is a, which is a bonus that, that this contract delivers. Very much. I'm, I'm uh, sad that Councillor Clay feels the need to make a, a little bit of a personal attack on me. Perhaps she doesn't understand the difference between voting for the principle of a new contract and then rightly interrogating what is going on in terms of the implementation of a new set of arrangements. We've known for a very long time, you as the chair of the committee and me as the opposition lead on the committee, that these changes were going to be implemented. One of the worst complaints that I've received is that when the contracts first started, that some people were on the streets of Wandsworth wearing shirts that said Lambeth. Now, you know, I think it's quite right for us to ask questions, and I think it's quite disgraceful for you to suggest that I have voted in favour of something and then have no right to find out why implementation is not matching up with what we were told at the committee. Thank you. Councillor Morritt. Sorry, can I reply Question. to that? No, you can't. Councillor Morritt. <laughs> <coughs> Question five to the leader, Madam Mayor. Um, I thank uh, Councillor Clay, sorry, Councillor Morritt for, for his question. And this, this particular occasion was a matter of enormous pride for all of us. 
whatever the outcome of that result, the fact that Wandsworth was the first buyer to declare, the fact that it was done well before every other result came through, uh, was a testament to not only the hard work put in by uh, the people at the count on the day, but all the hard work preceding that during the day and the months before. And clearly, the result may not have been to the liking of party opposite, but certainly on this side, there was much joy in, in, in finding that Richard Tracy had been re-elected and returned to serve four more years for the people of Wandsworth. Supplementary, Madam Mayor. Great. Um, can I thank the leader for his response and reflecting on the issue of teamwork and togetherness? The election results not actually show that residents in this borough and indeed elsewhere in London actually rejected the divisive and when it comes to paying his fair share of tax hypocritical approach of the Labour candidate. I thank Councillor Murray for this question and in particular the issue of uh, uh, divisiveness that uh, the Labour mayoral candidate unfolded during his campaign. It, it, is, it is hugely disturbing that in, in a city which is full of all sorts of communities and a hugely diverse population should find that its person aspiring to be its leader was singling out one particular community for critical comment and, and almost co cozying up to another to suggest that he had a, some, some special relationship with them. That, I, I'm glad to say, Londoners have rejected that approach because Londoners believe in, 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 in a city that runs and hums together. Supplementary question. Yeah. Councillor Randall. Thank you. I'm rather disappointed to hear that supplementary from Councillor Morritt as I thought this question was about the staff and the work they did in that election and not about the participants. And on that note, I'd, I'd wish, um, like to ask the leader whether he'd also make some comments about uh, the work done in the polling stations, not just at this election, and that at every election, and how in fact they, uh, the staff turn, do a wonderful job, and it's perhaps something that we take a little bit for granted that our democracy runs so smoothly. Uh, thank Councillor Randall for her question, and, and, and uh, absolutely join you in, in, in paying tribute to the staff uh, who, who man the uh, or people, I suppose, the police uh, polling stations. But the staff staffing police polling stations, if that's the kind of language you want. Uh, it's quite interesting. I, I, I was telling at a polling station for two hours, and it was quite so destroying to stand outside in drizzling rain and to count 20 people going through the door per hour. And to just imagine that uh, there were uh, council staff inside who had that kind of turnout for large parts of the day. So keeping their spirits up uh, and being enthusiastic about the democratic process takes some doing. And yes, they... they, they, they uh, uh, deserve our congratulations and thanks. Councillor Daly. Councillor, uh, sorry, question six to the leader. Uh, Madam Mayor, thank Councillor Daly for his question. Uh, there's a very detailed um, answer, and I, what I would simply say is that uh, this side's attitude is not to count things for the sake of counting. This side's attitude is not to create a culture where officers chase targets because targets meet, mean prizes. What we expect from our staff is a consistent delivery of high quality services throughout their tenure and throughout the time, irrespective of what the rewards might be. They have served us well. Our target, realistic and reasonable targets, have served us and our residents well too. Supplementary? Yes. Um, thank, I thank Councillor Govindia for his answer, um, and particularly in here, he says that uh, perhaps I'm not fair to the Council because I only point out where targets have been weakened when in fact many targets have been strengthened. Um, but I'm glad he's pointed that out because I did notice that uh, in many cases targets are strengthened where we were already beating those targets. So um, there were regular library users under five, 4,170, and that has been strengthened to a target of 3,959 for next year. It seems to me that the council sets its targets uh, so they're nice and low and easy to meet. Uh, and uh, my question 
I just want to go back to the beginning of Councillor Gavinia's comments here, that this is the most open and transparent council. At the last two council meetings, we have challenged Councillor Govindia and the majority party to disclose much more than it is doing on there. The areas where it is underperforming, and it knows it is, in terms of having the highest social rents in the country, highest leaseholder charges, uh, when is he going to be disclosing those on the website and truly become the most transparent council as he claims he already runs? Uh, I thank Councillor Daly for his question supplementary. It's interesting he picks on the library targets. Um, and in fact, the answer alludes to exactly the reason why that target has changed. Because the hours of opening libraries have changed. And that is why it is a realistic reflection of what the target should be in view of the reduced uh, opening hours. It's a, you know, we, we're not making any... Uh, we're not hiding the fact that library hours have reduced, and we're not hiding the fact that, as a result, a lower number of children might be able to access the library service. The transparency agenda that this council has embraced is a warts and all agenda. We are perfectly happy to say and, and disclose where our performance is good, where our performance is wanting, and where our commitment to improving that performance, uh, where, where it is wanting, uh, where that commitment lies. On the issue of council rents and leaseholder charges, these figures are available. It is not that I, I am not, in a sense, hiding the rent levels of this council. There are innumerable council papers in the, to the Housing OSC which should disclose each year, in fact, disclose the rent levels as a part of the rent increase. It, uh, well, you know, the comparison targets, uh, comparison levels are perfectly possible for you. You, you can e just as easily do as anyone else. Disclosing rent and leasehold charges is not something we are hiding. Councillor Grimston. Uh, supplementary, Mr Mayor, would the lady agree with me, first of all, that Councillor Daly is showing an extraordinary lack of, of political understanding. There's all the difference in the world between a policy decision of high rent, which means that we can continue to invest in our housing estates, which are therefore the best in London and have been for many years, and underperformance. And I think to describe a policy, you may disagree with the policy and want a housing stock in the mess that it was when we inherited it from Labour in 1978, but he should at least recognise that, that will be a policy decision, not an underperformance. And secondly, I'd say to the leader, does uh, he agree with me that at times when resources are becoming limited, a council has two choices. It can either spread those resources in an, a managerial way that everything is of equal importance, or it can focus in on what is really important to its communities. And setting targets, and setting targets... What order? No. Yeah, please put the question, Councillor. Yeah, sure. And I the leader agree with me that uh, uh, it's part of the target setting. We should be sending to staff a message. We don't want you spending much time on that. We want a loose target on that because we have much more important targets uh, where we really live politically. And that's the difference between the managerialism opposite and the politicians over here. Uh, I thank Councillor Grimston for his supplementary. He makes an, obviously, an obvious point, not only about... Council, Council Daly's uh, preoccupation with counting beans for the sake of counting beans, and also that we are politicians charged with the duty to make political judgment of how we are going to apply the resources and, and spread, out, spread those resources, making clear political choices in those, and if he has an argument about those political choices, let's have an argument about that, not about the, the, the number of beans we have counted or failed to count. The time for questions to the leader is now over. And